Hello and welcome back to the Sunday special episode of the UF Podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. We love a Sunday special, but we love a Sunday special guest. Yes. That are these our guests today are good friends of mine. You, you we we have personal you know, How do you guys know each other? Okay, so the 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 the, the couple that is here, um, uh, it's they. I, I went to high school with one, became friends with their husband, and now they're here today. They were on Shark Tank. They are the, the 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 inventors of the Bantam Bagel. Uh, Nick and Elise Alexak, thank you for coming on. Well, Thanks for having us. This is uh, this is uh, this is unbelievable. Look at Elise and I have known each other since right. ten years old. How how old? At least ten. That's where I want to start. It's like, what was Jared like in high school? Oh no, high school. Jared. That's what I've been this waiting to ask. Yeah. Jared was, I always say, part of our girl gang. There it is. Part of the girl gang. <laughs> now, it was, I've always been ex- the, the, the male voice we, of okay. the world. There was four, four of us, or okay. seven girls, really seven, because we had to do a whole Spice Girl thing. And if somebody wasn't available, you had to rotate. And That's, then you Jared. You always have a Spice Girl. Okay. Okay. Which, spi- which Spice Girl were you? Oh, you <laughs> oh, manager. Oh, the manager. You're finding he the was gigs. the guy in the Papa <laughs> chair in a in crisscross applesauce. Okay. That's right. So we had a lot of female friends. He did. He was yeah. part of the gang. Okay. Yeah. Part of the gang. And, and what was he like though? Uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> he just came right Careful, here. Careful, <laughs> You got a book to sell. Yeah, this, <laughs> is, this is being recorded. <laughs> you remember when we were partners in sixth grade math project? I remember we were partners sixth grade, and I we we had to do like a car or something, and I painted the floor <laughs> at your parents' house by accident, and I don't think I've heard the end of it ever since. Wow! So you're not I, welcome there I, anymore. No, 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 I'm okay. not welcome in the uh, Paltz home anymore. Yeah. Um, uh, so listen, but here's the more important part. Okay, Elise wrote a book because yes. they sold their business uh, after a major success. Bantam Bagels. I remember when they started the company uh, to bring me into the story. Yes. Uh, to make the story about you. Yes, Nick the book's Elise, mostly about Jared. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Page one. one. We met Jared. Right. Uh, so he was baby I, we, spice. We were all yeah. living in the city. Everyone, yeah, everyone was doing their own thing. And I remember Nick and Elise were like, we're making, we moved in together, we have, we're having a kid and we're making bagel balls. Right. How does it start? Yeah. Yeah. So take us back to the beginning. The idea that the idea truly came to Nick in the middle of the night in a dream. Yeah. Well, actually like rewind. How did, how did you guys meet? Okay. So, uh, we both went to Columbia. Okay. Um, I played baseball, Elise played lacrosse and as a freshman lacrosse player, your, uh, initiation. Um, you know, for the team, you know, friendly, okay. getting to know. Don't get canceled yeah, on this no, show. You know, okay. just, you know, doing things that you just, you know, meet everybody. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. One of the things to meet everybody was to come to the baseball fraternity house and do, you know, some activities. And then the last part of that journey was to come into a room where the entire baseball team was sitting and they had to do like dance contests and like all this <laughs> You no, were in the dance contest? No, we were just the, we were the audience okay. to the dance contest. <laughs> Elise, this was 20, 2003. Things were different. I know, then. I know. There I was know. no dance for and us. Dancing. Proof your yeah. worth. So, you did, so that, that's how you met. You saw her embarrassing saw across the room well, and no, said, I've got to have this. It has, yeah, it has, more, it has a more you wholesome, it has a wholesome <laughs> ending. Okay. So the last task is to find the cutest boy in the room. Okay. Sit on his lap and give him a kiss on the cheek. So it's like a sorority, like hazing thing. Yeah. No, hazing we, is no, we were definitely both hazing. Athletes, so it's like a team. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a team hazing, hazing. thing. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Got it. And I picked Nick. And she picked me. Okay. Um, and That's then didn't talk to me for like six months. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then who reinitiated the, uh, the. Elise did. We saw each other out uh, at like a party and then literally were inseparable from that moment on. Like, and they truly were because I remember like when I moved to New York City after, you know, graduating Penn State, like they were here and around and you guys were together and everyone you know, knew Nick. Everyone knew Nick. Yeah. Like Nick was just like an immediate friend. I was just like we were attached right. to the hip like yes. from moment 1 after that. Okay. Like, but we did not work together. That, and right. that's the part that we want to talk about on this show yeah. because there might be like couples out there. We should start a business together. Right. right. And it doesn't. I, I remember when you guys started, it just was like, we're cooking up these bagel balls yeah. in the apartment. It was like a side, was it like a little side hobby. It, it started as just a fun thing. And okay. remember, this was 
I don't know. This was like the cronut time. Like when the cronut hit the yeah, city, and like, okay. it was like the biggest yeah, thing ever, was, right? Yeah. Right. Right after the Lehman line, crashes, the wars. everybody's yeah. like, what do we do? Oh my God. I thought, you know, the world was rainbows and butterflies. And all of a sudden being an entrepreneur was like sexy and like talked about. It wasn't sure. right. right just Wall Street anymore. Mm -hmm. And Cronut emerges, Baked by Melissa is dazzling every corner here in yeah, New York like City. We would watch Shark and Tank that, like every Friday night. And right, I would, and that, I would yeah. call her and be like, what about this idea? She'd be like, that sucks. And right. Then, right. <laughs> and I would shut down all of his ideas like a good wife. And then all of a sudden he had this dream and it was about bagels. And you know us, like we love bagels. Who doesn't love a good bagel? So right. well, what um, were your jobs like during before this? We were on Wall Street. Okay. So kind of boring, not really Both living. of you. Yeah. Both okay. of us were. Yes. So we were both a little bored and just at the beginning of our careers. And then when he finally said bagels stuffed with cream cheese. That was it. I was like, that was I'm it. in. Wow. And we I literally just, just like, like Googled how to make a bagel. Yeah. I remember my brother was sleeping on my couch. So they're starting this business. My brother's on my couch and they were like, we want to, we're going to start this bagel, you know, company and. And we want to send you the bagels, and I, I they sent them over, oh, and I like had three bagels. I was like, I'll take some bagels. Yeah. Nobody would yeah. ever say no and, to that, and, right? And I go send them over. Like maybe, you know, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll, you know, send them, you know, five bucks, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I remember my brother was sleeping on my couch, and he was like, "Did you?" He was he had no job, and he's going, "Did you even read a prospectus?" I was like, "It's a bagel <laughs> fucking company. What are you talking about a prospectus?" Dude, and you so, missed out. So you I missed out. I didn't. Yeah. You could have been I an equity partner. I, uh -huh. I tell this story to Harry all the time, and I'm like, and I could have been in early. Could have been Lori. So then they go on Shark Tank. They they go on Shark Tank, and you know, instant, I remember this episode. I've watched this episode. You're not alone. I I always say I know the Bantam Bagel people, and people are like, what the pregnant woman? Because <laughs> you guys were on when it was like, I feel like it was more at a peak of popularity. Like yeah, yeah, we got exactly. very lucky. That was it. Was season six? That's when it really really took yeah. off. And then since then, I mean, it's all in the book, but we. Basically, we realized how amazing the Shark Tank sort of like watcher is because they root for you. And it's you guys like, are entrepreneurs. Right, you know how right. tough it is. Like, yeah, you have customers and they follow you or like you, but it's there's a lot of opinions and there's a right. lot of judgment. And when you are on Shark Tank and they see the people behind and the hustle behind and like to, just the authenticity of what's going on behind the scenes, behind this bagel, you know, they root for you. And it's like, it wipes away a lot of the, the hater. You well, I think know? it's like right. when the sharks like something, and right. yeah. like, you get the deal. Right. That's like the immediate like badge of well, honor. Well, like you like pass the test. Someone legitimate and, like, is endorsing this. Right. Yeah. And like right. consumers yeah. like, of course I Other than this. Jared like, Right. I mean, no, I was yeah. out. I mean, no. he, was the, he was the shark that no. passed. He was the shark I that passed. No prospectus. <laughs> the numbers weren't right for me. What's a prospectus? <laughs> I didn't know. He was like, have you seen the numbers? I was like, I don't know shit. What am I going to look at numbers? Well, like, you're on my couch. <laughs> you're on my couch. So then I, I, I'll i never forget because, like, again, Shark Tank is like QVC with a, you know, a hard knocks element to it. Like HBO hard knocks. You're seeing the story. You're seeing yes. the young couple. And I remember you were pregnant on the show. Oh, yeah. And so that also adds an element. I'm a mom. We're starting this business. And you, Lori, you strike a deal with Lori. Yeah. And good partner, I'm sure. I mean, you probably, well, do you have anything? And she's, Lori's a part of the book as well. How old yes. are you guys when you start, when you? Uh, so it's 2029, just a little younger than 30. So you're 29. You did you have you're pregnant. Do you have any kids yet at the time? No. No, it's our first kid. Okay. And where are you living? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay. And is there a point? Uh, you still have full time jobs? Yep. So this is like your side thing until Shark Tank. I I quit the I quit my job to open up our first shop. Okay. So we had the shop open. It had already sort of exploded. We already got ourselves on QVC. You know, we were on we were on Today Show and like we got some good local press and buzz going on. Right. Then we made it onto Shark Tank and that's when things really got real. Okay. And that's when he quit. Yeah. Like we were on Oprah's favorite things <clears throat> at the end of 14. Before, before. And the then Shark Tank, Tank aired in January 15. Oh, what okay. 2015. Okay. 2015. What so it was like to back, back to back. Right. Like we basically yeah. were shipping bagels all over the U.S. So and like. At what point in your relationship, like at what point in this business are you like, what's this going to do to the marriage? <laughs> I mean, it's, when does it fall apart? It's, it's funny because that is like the question we get asked the most. Like, right. how how is it even fucking possible that this you guys a did this podcast as, right. as as a married couple? Like, how did you get through this? Right? Wait, because can like, I interrupt you for yeah, one second. Yes. My favorite part about that question 
is how many people have asked yeah, us that question. Right. People can't, it like blows their mind. Why do you think you're here right now? <laughs> that's you the, the question, question we're here to answer. answer. We want to know, are you fucking? No. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, for issues, like shit that was like, I think if we weren't running the business and we would have a fight, that fight would last like three weeks. And there would be like those silent, like fuck yous, like not talking to each other so in the it was kitchen. better for the relationship. It was, it changed relationships because like you had to get out of the way. Because you had other shit to do. Like right. you, you have to talk right. like, about numbers to send to Jared. Yeah, right. like we gotta get Jared the perspective. <laughs> right. So we gotta get past why the fuck you made broccoli for dinner. But, right. but then do you wind up like sweeping a bunch of shit under the rug so you can keep moving? In a good way. Sweeping okay. the <laughs> <laughs> Suburban it's a big rug. It's, just a big came rug. Out. it's all good. Everything's good. <laughs> no, but sweeping the shit that doesn't matter. Okay. What, you know when you're what? like, oh, we have to stay up all night and work this out. You can't go to bed mad. Right. And, but really, if you just went to bed mad in the morning, you don't really you don't care, care as anymore. much. Right. Mm. I always like say that. that. I think it's fine to go to bed mad. Right. If I, the issue is big I enough, you'll think about it in the morning. If not, then don't and worry about it. And that's just like this yes. business. And like, listen, do you, when you're starving, are you worried about like, you know, like self-actualization and like how good things are? And no, you're mm. worried about finding food. It, that was like that time. Right. We were surviving. We were fighting every single day to literally make it to the next day. Like people only saw the sexy stuff because that's what the press covers. But right. underneath, we were we were struggling. We were staring right. at the ceiling. How are we going to get to the next day? Should we sell the house? Or how are we going to have a yeah. baby? How are, you know, the kind of survival the anxiety just to get from one day to the so, next was so humongous. Is it hard to like separate? I guess what would end up, I would assume end up happening is that you have a big, you get on Oprah's favorite things and that's like, not just, a, that's a business win, but that's like the relationship win. Is it's it like hard? A, it's like it, a, I mean, it's, it's like all a one, win. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I guess it made, I guess looking back on it because obviously we were married and everything personally is so intertwined in the business. It wasn't like those moments weren't huge, but it was always just like, what's the next thing? Like there was no time to like sit and bask in like getting on Oprah's favorite things or getting on Shark Tank because behind the scenes, when you got on Oprah's favorite things, we had to figure out a way to make like a hundred thousand bagels that mm. we're going to ship to the people that were going to get the magazine in six weeks. So it was like, okay. Oh, and then there was a winter storm where no one got their fucking bagels. And mm. then we had to pay We ruined for Christmas everything. one year, yeah, like for an entire country. Christ it was like too many this. disasters, this too one. many fires. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the one you live in. <laughs> <laughs> and and we and you're constantly just when you're constantly in survival, then you're not worried about like the top of the pyramid. Okay. Is a date right. night possible? Definitely. When you're doing a business together, like is that even possible to like mm. put everything aside? Kids, sitter, we're not talking bagels. Just we're doing, you know, can you even do that? Like, it is, was, it like, was to hard. To be realistic to someone out there who's like, I want to start a business with my wife or husband. You're going to yeah, talk about it. has gone. You're going to you're gonna <laughs> talk, about, you're gonna right. talk yeah. about the business. If you yeah. start the business, like, yeah. it's your, it is your other baby, right? Like, mm. but we would, we made it like a, a very specific goal. Every Friday, we would go to the same wine bar right around the corner of our apartment in Brooklyn. And that was like the carrot we chased every week. It was like, mm. all right, we're going to get to Brooklyn on Friday. We're going to sit down. We're going to have a drink. We're going to have a glass of wine and we're just going to decompress and kind of put all of the week back together. Mm -hmm. Just the two of us sitting here. And like that was a really key thing, I think, for us to like stay grounded, like as a couple to still hold on to that. Because we would do that while we were working in Bantam wasn't a thing. Like so mm. it was like that one like vestige of what we used to do, we would still do to kind of make us feel like, OK, like we're still like husband and wife who like goes out right. like we're, you, we're still right. fun jordana do you relate to this as someone who started a company with her friends oh uh, yeah for sure it definitely feels like but you don't live with your friends it's right like the, you can the get good, away you can yell at them yes. from you have the your, 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 own, your own husband that's like not but i wonder, I wonder yeah. about that because i always when people say how did you do this with your husband i i would say how do you not like it, when we would disagree, we adapted this thing where we would just say fuck you to each other. And that would end every argument. Mm. You would just literally go fuck but you. But then doesn't the same thing come up again? Yeah, but soon you say fuck you again. No, that was our, <laughs> <laughs> that was our way of, of being ruins. like, this is one of those things that doesn't matter. And I'm, you know, when you just hold on to tension just because like now I'm in it. Right. Now, I can't let go because we're in this. And I have to like, that, that was like the, the white flag when you said fuck you. The person uh -huh. who said Fuck you. It's, but you can't do that with your friends. Yeah, you can. Oh. <laughs>
Depends on the friends. There's a fuck you said here at the Betches Corporation. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I just feel like for us, it felt like it was easier and faster for us to get through any conflict that we had because we were living together. We were married. Like we were in it together. Right. right? right. Going like, home to different homes might slow that down. It slows it down. Yeah. Like those, yeah. those conflicts no, are resolved momentum. instantaneously. Cause like you just have to, because right. you are going to sleep next to that person in 25 minutes. And they get it. Cause they're like in it. Cause they're also too. in it. Too. Right. It's not like we usually, if you have one person who's like doing a startup, I would imagine the other person is like, um, doesn't necessarily understand why you don't have time for things or right. and like everyone's roles are different. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. So you have the same exact priorities. Right. Like Is someone you, higher up in the business? Were you guys equals? We were equal. I mean, Elise was probably higher up. To be honest. I was probably higher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like as far as making the decisions and running the team and telling him what to do. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. more of the did, ideas guy. Did you ever butt heads over that? No. <sighs> no. I mean, okay. the, there are a few things that we would have heated conversations about on like okay. where to sell the direction of like how to like innovate. Like that was kind of where my place was. Like I right. created the new products, created the new flavors. Like that was kind of where I was. And then there would be battles about whether a flavor was the right flavor. And then we would mm-hmm. like, all right, fine. We're going to call like six people. You call six people. I'll call six people. Whoever gets the best answer. That's what we're going to do. Like it was just like instant Answers are done. Like there was right. just like no tiptoeing, no tiptoeing around. Yeah. Like so, every decision was like, and, and this is all in the book. We want people to go buy the book. A shark ate my bagel, and it's Elisa's memoir about starting the company, being in a relationship while you know having the company. Um, Lori coming involved, the sale of the company. I'm sure is 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 covered here. Yeah, is it after that too? Like coming back to like a different world. I'm sure not being. You know, any, are, are you bagel people anymore? You know what? You know that's got to be a different transition now. Oh, absolutely. So there's also the the acquisition bringing you through that because that's also a little bit of a mysterious thing. You know, like right, you how do you with some get nerd consultant? <laughs> <laughs> some Johnny Wallets. Well, I think the the hardest thing is <laughs> and, you've worked so hard to build this thing. It's your baby. You just described it. It is. And it's like another child. And you are so focused, I mean, on getting the best deal for the company and for the business because, you know, we had our parents invested, like all of our, you know, some of our close friends invested, like not my aunt and uncle, other than Jeremy. It's a close friend. Close friend. Thanks a lot, Harry. (laughs) And like all of those people's desires and hopes of the most success are like on your shoulders. So like you're going through these meetings and going through the process of like finding the best deal, finding the most money you can, the best terms. Mm-hmm. Right. But it was also for us selfishly, like finding the best partner, like the best new home for what we had built. Right. Mm. Because we were, you know, when we got to the end of it and decided like who we were going to partner with, it was a full acquisition. Like it wasn't just, you know, raising capital and getting like, you know, in, injected to capital on? to grow. And we stayed on for a few years, mm. but it was finding that home for the thing that we literally poured everything into um, was like just, it was so important. And we want people to go on Amazon. We'll have the link. Can we put the link in the bio of this episode on YouTube and on the podcast app and go on Amazon. It was number one for best new new release, new release Amazing. on Amazon. People are eating it up. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. I have a question. Okay. Did you guys ever, was there ever a point when you're, you're in the beginning or maybe before you quit your job or something like that, where you discuss like, what if it doesn't work out between us? Who gets this business? Mm. Like any discussion about like what would happen if like, got- where does the kid stay? Like on weekends? Like where does, well, the- like what do you do? Like <laughs> what do you do with it? Go? Like where is, I mean, like, is that never something, is that, never, is that never something that ever crossed your minds of like, if, you know, if this didn't work out, what no. would we no. do with but this business? That's a really good question. No one's ever well, asked. Us. No, one's, no one's ever asked us that. No, and possibly. One. Well, it's kind of a rude question, I guess. Well, no, I don't think it's, it's like, rude. Did you sign a prenup? Well, we didn't. Well, I mean, like, well, didn't even was, you were already married when you had this, right? Right, right? So, like, that probably wouldn't even do anything. But it's more like I don't know, like a biz, like a is there something in there? Like, like key man insurance like a, or something like a, like a, a yeah. post nut. Right. It's funny. Yeah, post, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah, that's it's funny. To, it's funny to think that like if you did get a divorce. Someone would be like, how'd you not talk about this? But like, <laughs> I can understand why not talking about that would happen. Like that's right. more normal to I, me. I guess right. it's just like the idea of like when you are, when you make the decision to do something like this and start your own something and like go all in, 
mm-hmm. you just are, you're so convinced it's going to work that right. the thought of how do you set up if it doesn't. But not the business not working, the no, marriage. I, I, yeah. I just think it's like, I but guess that maybe all gets for, rolled in. Too. I guess for us, maybe mm-hmm. it was unique because it felt like it was all the same. Like same it thing. was just like so intertwined. There was like, I don't think I can even think of any moment where we were like, this is us as a married couple. Or this well, is let us me put like, that back on you. Right. Do you, what would happen if Betches broke up? If like we weren't friends? Yeah. I mean that, that I think you see happen all the time with these companies where like, you know, two friends start a business and then they just don't speak to each other or someone buys each other out or something yeah. like that. Um, but like, I think it's different. I don't know. It feels different when you're married, married to an extent, maybe not. Um, Maybe I, w- I, I, I would even say maybe the marriage thing makes it easier, like just based on what you guys are saying, like the way it's rolled into one, like there's no. Right. You have all the same dependence. So right. you probably, yeah. Right, yeah. Our prior, you know how in relationships often, like when there's conflict, it's about like, I did more than you did. Right. You're like mm-hmm. listing off in your head. Yeah, but I did the fucking laundry and I did this right. and that. And, and I you're took not the kids. grateful. Yeah. And then, oh, well, I was at the office all day. Right. So everybody's <laughs> counting what they did. Right. Right. Something about when you have when your work and your life are the same list, it doesn't matter anymore who did what. We just got to knock out right. the list. Well, you have it just all has to of the done. same exact goals. Right. Yeah. Maybe so this is I what, think for that. Well, maybe we should be <laughs> telling couples to yes. start businesses together. Listen, if you're married, yeah. start a business. That's it. <laughs> well, it's like those super ordinate Soft. goals. You know, like it's like, what, how do you bring two people who are far apart together? You give them the same goals to work on. Right. So, and it's like, I think being married, you've already taken that step. In a, in a way, right? right? Like you've already like, you have the same goals. You want to be together forever. You want to you know potentially have kids. You want to like mm-hmm. spend the rest of your life. So you've made that commitment. And I think adding a business that you're both equally as invested in. Right. I just That's wonder, like, the- let, let's say it was on the rocks, right? I feel like it would be this moment of like, would I have to kind of eat shit because I am in, uh, my lives are so intertwined. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I- that that sounds like a, a risk you might think uh, about. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. We, <laughs> we should. I'm, I'm a cynic. I'm Some just wondering what the the worst. I try to think of the worst case scenario no, good for one. any but good for one. any. But for, it, it sounds like again like you're past that point. It's like you didn't even have to think about it. That's like amazing. That that was never. You're right, and it, and it is a rare thing that we would just be so aligned and mm-hmm. so in tandem and so be able to just say fuck you and move on and like right. it didn't bubble up afterwards. And you're right. It almost sounds too dreamy. That's. I, I don't know no. how to explain it other than it just worked and we were surviving. And I think now we've had to go through the work of like being, sh- you know, he's off starting other businesses. I was writing the book on my own and um, making sure that we're not like keeping track. Like, yeah, but I'm doing these 45 things and what are you doing? And I, right. I have to remind myself now not to do that. So you're saying so, it was easier before. It yeah, was. I was just going to say, I think like. And I also have to remind myself now to like celebrate his wins. Where before everything was a, a, right. a common right. celebration. Right. Okay, we did this, we did yep. the, But right. like, he's got this, you know, tech business. Oh, that's great. Like actually be interested and excited and like cheer him on rather than see it as like, okay, well that means you can't bring Chase to soccer. So yeah. thanks. What are so the now kids going to It's very car interesting. Seats, right? I, I yeah. think it's interesting because I was thinking like maybe the mortgage for couples could be this thing but there's no win with a mortgage yeah. like the win is mm. i guess just being able to pay it to live somewhere, <laughs> to live and, somewhere. And like you don't think of it in the same a business right. there's no oprah's favorite things for the mortgage you know right. Like, right. right but I mean, it does it is something that keeps marriages together they're like this is our common goal we have a financial thing going on i don't know right, right. and like i guess putting... you were together 10 years right before you yeah. started right. yeah. so you have right. a foundation it's not like right. you just met and you're like let's start this thing kind of know how each other operate before you made that decision to go into business with someone. Yeah, that's true. No, but I, I do think the idea of, you know, now not having Bantam as like a joined, you know, shared responsibility has been something that has just like changed the way that we interact with each other. Like, cause just, we have to like to Elise's point, mm-hmm. like she's spent a year and a half writing this amazing book and you know, Get it on I'm, Amazon, the link I, in the bio. <laughs> and I'm like trying to start you know, like a home renovation, like construction company, like two vastly different paths right. that right. we are both taking on our own. And I think like it really is true. Like we've had to step back and like congratulate each other and like acknowledge each other's work on what we are doing away from each other. Yeah, which I, I think from the beginning was like now really, than we did before. You talk more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, you just 
presume that the other person hears your brain waves when you spend every second with them. Right. And our team who worked for us would be like, you sit across six inches from this man. Like, how do you not know what we just talked about? Right. And I'd be like, I don't know. It, like, and now we actually make a point to be like, so, <laughs> so how was your you day? Yeah, like, no, how was your day? Like, and yeah. we didn't have that for a right. ten year period where, because like our day was like tied to each other. In that so, ten year period, were there ever points where you were like, all right, I've had like enough of you? Like, I don't like I've been with you all day, and then I've gone home with you, and we're doing everything together. Like, I'd like a little break. Don't be mad if I say no. It's, I mean, no, it's a, that's I, amazing. Don't As be their mad. friend, I would say that that's not in their nature. No, no. I just, to no me, alone something, time. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> we are together <laughs> always. Because I listened to that yeah. Esther, I don't know her last name. Perel, yeah. Okay, and it was fascinating because yeah. she brought up so many things and you brought up so many questions that I just never had considered. And I, I do think there's the nuance that she said of like, you also have to add in personality. Right. Like, it's not just an answer. You yeah, know, so no, like, of course. Yeah, right. not one so size fits for us, all. Our yeah. personalities just aren't like that. You mm -hmm. know, so right. that is part of what works. And like, I guess if you were considering working with your husband or boyfriend or something, maybe it's a gut check. Do on you want to see all the time? Right. Do you want <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do you need that? Not like, that that's separation. right or wrong, as I'm saying. Like, I think sure. it's like exactly like you're saying. It's like, it, does it work in your nature together to spend this much time together? Or are you people who operate better when you go do your own things and then come back to each other at the end of the day? A lot of people do. Right. Well, also yeah. to come back when you have a kid with someone, these are, you got to want to spend time with that person to have the kid together, you know, to sure. go with the business being one of the kids. Right. I, I think it's, you know, I didn't expect to ask this, but I guess the more, you know, pressing thing for someone who's listening, maybe in a relationship right now, what would you advise if they're dating someone who's in the entrepreneurial world? How would you like how as a partner, because now you're basically now you're in a relationship with someone starting a business, both of you separately. So yes. what would you say to like someone like I'm dating someone who's an entrepreneur or I'm an entrepreneur who's dating someone who's not. Yes. How do you support? What's it, what do you? Jared, how do you support each can other? Can I? Can I also just say every time I see you and like listen to your stuff and just catch up with you, I feel for his dating life. And I've met. <laughs> That's I, right. I, for anyone That's who's right. Right. No, guys, any, any sad soul that would go on a date with, you. with one of your girlfriends that I swore you were going to marry. And yeah. we were like, we, I've met every one of his girlfriends like throughout the years as you were starting out. I've always seen your career as being an entrepreneur, like what yeah. you're doing. Your product is just like you. The, the, that's right. You know? I'm a slut. <laughs> Put my body out there for these people every day. I think it's unbelievably difficult to understand what an entrepreneur, yep. the the weight of being an entrepreneur is when you're not in those shoes. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, it goes back I think to what it's we were unbelievably saying. difficult. So I think if you're the companion, it's really like, I, like having a understanding the weight mm -hmm. of what that person is carrying every day, like to get from one day to the next, um, the financial burden every single day, every single tweet, every single right. email, every single thing that you do, every step you take forward is a really, really big fucking deal and comes with a lot of weight and like a lot of risk. Well, I think, yeah, and, exactly. The weight, because like if you're dating someone and they're starting a business, like they're making the biggest riskiest choice of their entire life. And if you don't recognize that in them and that they're making that decision and like you as the person who is not stepping out and becoming an entrepreneur and starting your own thing, if, if your expectations are that they are going to, I don't know, just like, it feels like you have to acknowledge how hard of a decision that is to right. make. I, and, and I feel like relationships don't work if, both people are not right. taking if you're mad similarly that they're sized on email risks. or on the phone or during the right. weekend. You, it's right, just it's like not Saturday, like, how are you working? You're like, I have to work every day because right. I've put all of myself into this thing and I've I want to make it successful. I've always said that like, it's hard to explain the things you do for no money. Yeah. And it's like, it's a combination of like doing things for, and then someone looks at you and goes, you don't have to do that. And you go, I don't have to do anything I do. Right. And then, you know, right. like, I don't have to be here with you right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, all I choose to. Yeah. 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 I, I'm choosing to, but I choose to do these things because what will come of it. Right. Um, and if it was know. easy, everyone would do it. And I think that's like what dif like s differentiates from someone who's like willing to go out on their own and start their own thing and like take the risk. Like there is just that it's a different level of work. But it's, you know what I would different. say? Like if you are the entrepreneur with the non-entrepreneurial 
non-entrepreneur partner, it is sort of your responsibility to at least bring that person along with what you're doing and why you're doing uh, why that's you're doing a stressful, what you're doing. but I listen as someone who is like, you know, I feel bad about that. Like I and I agree. You, your whole life is mixed in you, the difference between personal life and business are just mixed. I'm sure you felt that here. Yeah. It's sure. all it's together. All the same thing. It's all yeah. you. Right. So like, you know, I feel bad like even telling someone that I'm not sure if we're going to be like serious or not about some of my day cuz I'm like I'm now making it their problem too, you know, like I'm now making it their emotional thing to have to like work through with me, you know, bring them on tour with you, make them your opening act. That's what, that's the way to (laughs) solve the issue. Right. Now you're in business together. Right. (laughs) I mean, like understanding, (laughs) uh, explaining, like if I weren't to do this tour, this is what it would do. This is the anxiety it would give me. This right. is what I would lose out on. This right. is what I see it leading into. Mm-hmm. Like there are other the vision, in, in other value. Yes, other value based things that like human beings can understand. You know, no, they don't I, have to be you. I, I, I guess I, I was thinking of it a different way. Like just like you know, hey, want to come with me and do these shows? You know, I'm going to do these shows and come with me on the road and then. You mind selling the t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, ah, I can't do. You know, like I would yeah. feel. No, you don't have you to know, do that. Right. I think you right. need to bring someone along for the the emotional ride, like the the shit you're really going through, right? And okay. why you're really doing what you're doing, why you have to answer that email at that time, you know? And where you see it going, like because you see like divorces and older people when it's like he worked too much, mm. right? Like, oh, that's they a problem around. for you. It's only a problem because that person didn't understand what they were doing and why the hell they were doing it. Right. What, what, right. what, what was the dream? What was the, you know, yeah. Do you feel like the marriage would be as strong if the business tanked? <gasps> Ooh, that is a good question. Yes. I like how Jordana went negative. I try to go I, negative. I, right. I just, like, I like I'm Jordana's just, perspective. I'm just trying, I'm just trying, I'm trying to drive a wedge here. I, right. I just, I, yeah. Do you want to sit the tree up? <laughs> no, I'm just going like, because I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to think of like. Get book two in the works. I'm trying to think right. about like the idea of starting a business with my husband and like all the things I would think of as like potential like issues. Like I think that obviously like the business worked out. And so like everything seemed to have worked out with the business. And I'm just wondering like if it didn't, would that have affected the relationship like negatively? You I, think? I, I, I think, mean, there's no way to know. I think there's no way to know, but I think there's no way to say it wouldn't have affected it, mm-hmm. but it just is a matter of like how it would have affected it and what we would have been like coming out of it. Like, well, right. if, if, a, if a business, if, if something that you invest so much of your time right. doesn't work. Cause usually, usually it doesn't, right? Like, isn't that like the business thing? Like, like right. the most right. businesses don't work out. Right. I mean, we, right. we feel very fortunate and lucky that, you know, we worked hard and it worked. Well, right. I, I um, think it's so important, like, because it's all in, I'm, I'm kind of uh, thinking about this on the fly, but like, cause the marriage and the business and the kids, mm-hmm. it's all one thing. It's all one ball. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you couldn't separate it. Right. You couldn't dissect them. The one from couldn't the take other. Take it all apart. Right? So it's like, I do think that like the stronger, the marriage, the stronger, the business, like mm-hmm. there's no chance, you know, like the idea that it would fail. Like there's a part, there's a, I'm and sure vice a versa, point. the stronger the business, the stronger the marriage, I would imagine. Right, it goes right. all yeah. together. Right. Like I, yeah. I, There must have been a point where you're like, there's no fail here. We have a I, successful business. I mean, there was there was like, literally we would say like, we just, there is no option to right. this for this not to be successful. We are going right. to make it successful and that's just, just what it's going to be. Well, that's be. kind of the attitude you have to have in marriage too, I think a lot of the time right. of like, the, the option is that we're going to work through this. It's right. not like, you're not giving yourself like the option of the out. Right, yeah, Bantam right. may become something else is like always an option to, to make it survive. Right. Right. This marriage might become something else to make it survive. Yeah. yeah. And that may yeah. be a nature nurture type of argument. But if you're the kind of person, like you said, with marriage, right. If I'm getting married, like this is, we're, this is it. Right. <laughs> Till right. death. We're, and then you decide like, I don't care if we're mad at each other. I don't care. Like, of course we've had fights, but like, I don't care. I know they're not going to make us get divorced. Right. I right. just know we're going to be together forever. So, you know, eventually you're going to work through anything. Right. Right. Listen, we want everyone to go buy the book. A shark ate my bagel. It was number one on Amazon, the new, new book section. Um, the link is in the bio. It's great. I love it. And it's inspirational. It's telling people about becoming entrepreneurial, the the struggles, the wins, the losses, the 
the whatever. Is well, there I mean, another one? Uh, yeah, the the, wins the and losses. Kids. Yeah, the kids. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the ties. The, but also brings you along for the real journey. Like, really. The untold yes. story? What is, what is, is this behind, what is behind the really Instagram like being an entrepreneur? No. Tons of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> the cocaine, the women. Just flip to chapter 20. Right. <laughs> well, I, 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 to back to what you said, like, if the marriage didn't work, like I, like, I would think, like, you get that big check from Lori, and Nick's like, let's go out to a bar. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the business would end right away. You know, that's the beginning right. of the end, you know? Yeah. Like, Let's go put this you in our know. nose right yeah. now. And he's like, what? What happened to you? Well, we were going to make a bagel cup. Right. You know, there must be something to it. Because when we made our deal with Lori, she also, you know, it's not so public, but um, it's a little bit, I guess, known that she works as as a partner with her husband, too. And they oh, okay. seek out okay. husband and wife partnership interesting and they love that like they look for that dynamic so there must be something to it where people are making it work and, and I think they, like, we learned a lot from them from the two of on, them like yeah. how to work to get like because Lori is obviously a massive celebrity and you know known by everyone and her husband is this incredible like partner to her right no one really knows about but they do right and like they work because they are so tight Right. right. And other. again, to go back to like who's in charge when Nick says, you know, at least probably made a more of the decisions. You probably look at them in that way, that the dynamic of like someone's got to be out front, you know, right. being Lori and someone's got to be in the back, you know, coming up with cream cheese. <laughs> you know, like that <laughs> does the back guy and cream cheese. That's yeah, that, yes. that's a cream cheese guy. Cream that's cheese what guy. I always call <laughs> Nick. I, so I, I don't know. I, it's a, I think it's interesting for someone to hear the success story. They should go read the book. Totally. Um, yeah, a shark ate my bagel. But I, yeah, the, the, what is, so the Lori and the husband, um, I've had, you're not my only friends who have been on Shark Tank. Right. Isn't wow. this crazy? I know three drawn to separate businesses. How many I, of those prospectuses did you get? Read them all? Yeah. Maybe you invested in none. Maybe you're friends because they've all tried to solicit you for they, investment. Right. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Well. that. <laughs> Look, at Elise always looks at me like she can't believe that I live a life. <laughs> That's like Elise's <laughs> hard, like, hard stop. Uh, Just I, live a life. I can't believe house. I live yeah. amongst people. I can't believe you are living. <laughs> right. What's the advice you give to anyone that like is thinking of starting a business with their partner? Like what's the one thing that you... The parting gift. The yeah. parting, yeah. Uh, um, make sure your idea is a good idea. <laughs> Don't fuck up. I'm serious. <laughs> Everything go on Shark Tank, they'll tell has you. nothing right. to do with your partner. Like, you, of course, yes. But at the end of the day, you guys have to have a really, really good idea. It has to be proven and solid and um, like scalable. Does Shark Tank have super fans? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Do you come across them? Yes, we got. So <laughs> I, there's a funny story. Like we actually got back in the heyday when I was saying we were on one of those early earlier right. episodes. And so because of that, we actually got to be really tight with Lori and her husband and some of the producers. And mm -hmm. we would have them at our house and we would hang out in the city. And we were on several follow ups. Like I think we were on Shark Tank about seven times. But I remember and you so, guys going on as follow up was like a big deal. Like that was a very big deal. Right. Like where are they now? Well, they only showed the good ones. Yeah. yeah. Right. And like that was seriously, and if <laughs> right. you got one, that yeah. just again was like deal. that right. confirmation More to the PR. viewing public yeah. that like, oh my, holy shit, these guys are crushing it. Like, and a lot right. of good marketing for you guys, reminding everyone about your business. Yeah. Incredible yeah. and bringing them along for the ride. So um, what, what was the question? <laughs> No, oh, she, she answered the question. Good idea. No, the Shark Tank super fans. Oh, oh yeah. And so we, uh, at that point mm. in time, we were being definitely being recognized. You know, like, and there was once at an airport we were recognized. Oh my God, are you are you the bagels? And we would say, Yeah, we're the bagels. Oh, God, yes. And we would take a selfie and whatever. And then I, as we get in this like eight a.m. flight, I'm wearing no makeup, hardly a bra, sweats, like the whole thing, the plane gear, right? Sure. And then I. Plop down in row twenty four, middle seat. Next to this one. <laughs> next to the, next same to the fan. Next She's to like, "How's the success going?" <laughs> and you just signed yourself up for like a uh, take a three, a three chat. hour yeah. Shark Tank. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Q and a Q &A. Q &A. Yeah. yeah. I saw her texting her friends and like t like inconspicuously like right. taking a picture. I was like, "Oh God!" They come over and give you know, the snacks. She's like, "Give them our pretzels. <laughs> I, I, they I, eat it. I don't need it. They do." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> She can barely get an aisle seat. 
Well, it's not all glam. So happy you guys came on. Nick this and Elise so Alexak. It's Elise Alexak's book, Check co founder of Bantam Bagels, A Shark Ate My Bagel. If you're watching on YouTube, we're holding it up. We got it in our hands. It's a beautiful book. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Go hit the link, get the book, get inspired, learn the struggles, the wins, the ties, the love that made a business. Um, congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome. So you. happy you guys came. Thank you, Thank you guys for having us. And that's our Sunday special. We did it again. That's it. Bye. Boom. The UA Podcast is produced by Jorge Morales Pico, Sean Kilby, and Candice Maniga. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico and Shannon Sassone. Social media by Candice Maniga. Guest booking by Ali Friedlander. Be sure to follow at u.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.